stent will worsen the whole thing. Actually, bypass surgery is associated with double the risk of heart attack afterwards. Don't ask a difficult question. I have a couple of questions. Oh my God. One is, how do we get rid of the plaques in the arteries without statins, for example? And the second question is, if someone is uh, detected with, say, 90% blockage or something, and having stent implanted is good or not? <laughs> uh, good, good. Both questions are good. They are really good questions. You know what it shows? Are you an engineer? Yeah, see, I, how did I know? How did I know? Because only an engineer can illogically think that if there is a block, that must be removed. There is a toilet block, it must be removed, no? <laughs> if the toilet pipe is blocked, or the water to come, you put a new pipe. But unfortunately, the human body is non-linear and non-Euclidean, so you can't apply your Euclidean in linear mathematics there. When the block starts as a child, you start, God starts giving you bypasses. They are called collaterals. So it's good. It's good to have a block. Remember that? Don't try to remove the block. As a matter of fact, we have developed a new system of yoga where you can produce blocks in those rare individuals, unfortunately, who don't have block. I'll show you that. It's very simple. You know the sannyasis in the Himalayas live up to 100 years? You and I don't live. Do you know why? We have too much oxygen here. They have very little oxygen there, up there. So less oxygen means the heart gets uh, to learn to live longer. So with the blocks coming, nature has given the block, the heart will live longer. So don't try to remove that. And whoever has told you that statin will remove the block, must have told you or take, taken you up the, the golden path. Huh? Now this is a very simple exercise. This is very simple and it has two things it does. A, it helps your heart to have intermittent hypoxia. You know, every second, part of the second you don't get oxygen, the other half you get the oxygen. So heart gets stimulation and it produces the blocks and helps the blocks. And very simple. And at the same time, it exercises a beautiful muscle called psoas major. It's a large muscle which starts in the chest at the back and comes down to the pelvis and holds on and comes and attaches itself to the thigh. So that if you stimulate this muscle, all the organs are stimulated every day in the human body. It's very simple. See, stand like this. Of course, now I've had a full breakfast. I shouldn't be doing it, but anyway, let me try. You should do it on empty stomach. You stand like this and then breathe in and breathe out. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. Sit without a chair. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. Stand up, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Now what have I done? I have breathed out for 20 seconds without oxygen going to go my heart. And now breathing in. So intermittent hypoxia I have given. Number two, I have stimulated my psoas. If you did it five times in the morning, five times in the evening, your blocks will increase. You don't want that, right? And you will live longer. How about the stent part? I didn't want to answer that. Actually, the stent will worsen the whole thing. Or, or a bypass surgery. No, no. <laughs> Both will worsen the whole thing. Now, you live after that because of the placebo effect. You shouldn't live after that. Actually, bypass surgery is associated with double the risk of heart attack afterwards. Quadruple the risk of stroke afterwards. Sudden death increases afterwards. Heart failure increases afterwards. Nobody tells you this. But your pain goes. Pain goes. Pain went without the surgery also, you know that? I gave you an example of placebo effect. Now you think oh, medicines will cure you? I will give you a study. It's a very interesting study, recently published. Published in one of the most prestigious journals called Science Translational Medicine, STM. And this was done in four universities, Oxford, Cambridge, Hamburg and Munich. Led from Oxford by Professor Bingel, who is the professor of medicine in Oxford. You can uh, write down. You can write, I'll give you a reference. Good. You have a clerk also. <laughs> paid clerk or unpaid clerk? <laughs> yeah. I saw an American plaque which said, I am the boss of the house. I have permission of my wife to say so. Go on. Tell. Write down. Bingel. B-I-N-G-E-L. Bingel at all. At all in Latin means and others. There are so many authors. I can't tell you all of them. And the, the, uh, this name is the placebo effect. Placebo effect. P-L-A-C-E-B-O effect. 
and the journal is STM, Science Translational Medicine. Year is 2011. Volume is 3, page is 70. You read this, what they have done is, they did a study <coughs> of morphia. Morphia? You know morphia? Biggest painkiller. And they took severe pain patients. Severe pain. The like of which you can't even imagine. And they ran a drip of morphia in their vein. Okay? But told the patient, this is not morphia. This is a, a new vitamin we have found out for your disease. Your pain won't go, but you will get better. 100% patients' pain didn't go. Can you believe that? What was running in their vein? Morphia. And the most powerful painkiller. Right? Then, they what is called crossover study. They took the patient to another center. They ran salt water, saline, in the vein. And then said, this is the latest salt of morphia. Very powerful. Your pain will go. Pain went. Did you get that? That's the placebo effect. So, angioplasty, scientifically, is damaging the intima of the artery. You're breaking it. And then attracting a clot. By evening, that is closed. Whether you have a stent or a, no stent, ordinary stent, desiccated stent, medicated stent, etc., etc., is all for money, nothing else. And you get better because you are paid money. Placebo effect. Today, the greatest cause of a stroke is not having diabetes or hypertension. Going to a hospital with bypass facilities after chest pain is the biggest risk for stroke. 50% of them get a stroke after bypass surgery. 97% of them get multiple emboli and they cognitive defect, which settles down to 47%. They don't know, they forget so many things. They don't, sometimes they forget their boss's name, etc., etc. You get the point? But this is not known, no. This world is worklish heat. Do you know how bypass surgery started? You don't know. And how it became a business? You don't know. If you knew, you wouldn't have bypass surgery. It is not an How I knew you were an engineer? I knew because a lot of people do this. This is this one man called Subramanya Swami. Have you heard of him? <laughs> some years ago he came to me. Somebody brought him to me with some chest pain. Which was of course little. So he, I examined him and said, look, it's nothing to worry. You, you're stressed so much, you know, you little go slow. That was the time he was contesting for, for the parliament from Madurai. And he said, what are you talking, doctor? There's a block. And I'm an economist. I'm a professor of economics in Harvard. I said, that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. No, no, there is a block. You must remove, like you. Then I told him, it's not like that, Mr. Swami. You know, they, I told, explained to me, wasted so much of my time. All free, you know, because these politicians, they don't pay. <laughs> but he would have paid. If I had asked, he would have paid. I didn't ask. <coughs> anyway, he went and had an angioplasty. After that, a lot of problems here. Now he's all right. Because nothing happens to these people. Nature looks after them. So I do this yoga technique for some children, unfortunate children who don't get blocks. And they develop blocks. Or even without the block, if you did every day this exercise, you get intermittent hypoxia for the heart. The heart lives longer. Now did you understand the difference between a dynamic structure which is non-linear and a non-linear structure which is the toilet pipe? Or probably you are in the oil company pipe. Oil company pipe is blocked. <laughs> you know. 